to World Music Night. We're doing this virtually, so it's a little different this time around. We have some instruments to demonstrate, and we also have a blessing for you. What I have in my hand is a conch. This particular conch is actually from Florida, from the Gulf side, that I found when I was a boy. And notice that if you slice the end of the conch, it becomes a musical instrument, which Garrett is going to demonstrate. But I just wanted to say that recently it was discovered that a conch in France, in the, in the Pyrenees Mountains, that they discovered in 1931, they thought was a drinking vessel. But upon closer inspection, they discovered that it was modified and that it could actually play three pitches, a C, a D, and a C sharp. And if you go on NPR and you type in conch, musical instrument, you can actually hear a demonstration of that conch, which has been dated to be approximately 17,000 years old. So it is regarded as one of the oldest musical instruments that we know of. However, the oldest is about 40,000 years old. It actually is a flute made out of the, the, uh, the bone of a bird. So we are going to hear this conch sound. You might know the Lord of the Flies, the novel, in which the conch symbolizes law and order, and then of course it is destroyed before the end of it all. But Garrett, I will put my mask back on, and we can pretend that this is a scuba, a scuba gear, and we're going to, I'm going to give the, this law and order to Garrett very ceremoniously, so that we do not get close, I will put this on the piano, and then Garrett will come and he will demonstrate And a didgeridoo is the perfect word for a spelling bee. Can you spell didgeridoo? Well, Garrett is going to show us his very own didgeridoo. We do have a didgeridoo in our collection, which is housed here in Brown Fine Arts. That needs a little work, and Garrett's going to tell us why John Quincy Wolfe's instrument has yet to sound these days, but this instrument does sound. Garrett. So this is a sort of ancient instrument. It was developed around 1,500 years ago by the uh, Aboriginal people of Australia. And essentially, it is a hollowed out piece of wood that you just kind of do a bit of a raspberry into, and that vibration creates the noise that we associate with the didgeridoo. And I'm going to show that. And along with that noise, while you're also going, you can actually make a noise with your mouth, which they would use to kind of sound like a coyote, for example. So you would go, and so it would sound like, Whereas with the didgeridoo, it's Thank you very much. We have another instrument that I would like Garrett to, to tell about. This is another good one for a spelling bee in Ocarina. Hey, 
again. So the ocarina is an even more ancient instrument. It's about 10,000 years old, and it's developed two separate times. Once in a sort of like circular pot shape in China, and this form, which is called like a sweet potato shape, which was developed in Mesoamerica. Uh, it very quickly became a part of European courts as soon as they kind of made their way over into Meso Mesoamerica. And it is known for playing, <laughs> you can play just about anything with it. But nowadays, it's usually an alto instrument. Uh, usually only have a range of about an octave and a half. And mainly you're going to just stick to diatonic notes. So I'm just going to play a little bit that I came up with. Thank you very much. We are very grateful for Garrett to demonstrate these instruments. And I'd like you to look for them. Go on YouTube, explore, and maybe you too can own one of these instruments. They come in a variety of prices, but they are affordable. I would like to welcome Derek back. Derek has been away for a bit, and it was a few years ago in this very room that Derek had demonstrated the bagpipe to the delight of the audience, especially the children. Uh, and I believe they were dancing. They were dancing jigs. And you can dance at home. Fear not. You know, no one is looking. But you know, children generally don't really care. They're many very much uninhibited. <laughs> and so I would like Derek to come and demonstrate once again the bagpipe. The Highland Bagpipe actually has a long history uh, with the British military. In fact, um, when the Highlanders would march into battle, they would always have a piper leading them forward. In fact, uh, there was one piper who was actually tried by the English government, and he claimed, I could not have gone to battle since I carried no weapon of war. But the judge ruled that the bagpipe was actually a weapon of war. So, here you have it, the weapon of war, the Highland Bagpipe.
Until we meet again, until we meet again.